today we're going to be talking about the Meteor Men of Elden Ring, the Alabaster Lords and the Onyx Lords, or the Slender Wayfarers as they're referred to by some. Now these guys are fairly rare as you don't find them in too many places throughout the lands between. In fact, most of the occurrences happen to be underground. So just to start off, what, what are they? What are these guys? Well, from some in-game text, we can deduce that A, they founded gravity magic, and B, that they rose to life when a meteor struck a long time ago, which isn't too much to go on, so I guess we could, uh, we can maybe get some notes from their appearance. Both subgroups are functionally identical outside of the color differences. They possess long hair, a tall slender frame as their name Slender Wayfarer suggests. Uh, no clothes whatsoever outside of this belt engraved with strange symbols possibly relating to the gravity magic that they founded or possibly relating to the meteor that gave them life. So far I haven't been able to find these uh, symbols anywhere else, but if you guys can find anything, you know, let me know in the comments if I missed anything on that, but uh, moving forward. They also seem to possess elf-like or Hylian-like ears of some kind, which uh, makes the at least the onyx ones or the alabaster ones when in the shadows look like some type of dark elf or something, which is kind of funny if you played God of War. Now, there doesn't appear to be anything else we can learn from how they look. Outside of these strange markings they all seem to possess, there's always a large one on their back or chest. There seems to be small ones on their hands. They almost look like cracks of some kind. And if that is what they are, it indicates possibly something glowing underneath, but it's really tough to say what the what they are. Crack-like marks could also just be etchings or engravings of gravity magic on them, similar to the ones on Radon's blades. On a bizarre side note, however, though, the Onyx Lord found inside Yellow Annex Tunnel appears to be missing four of his toes. I know that's kind of random, but uh, just something I noticed when I was observing the body. Definitely something that uh, Miyazaki intended for, though. You know, him and his obsession with feet, or supposed obsession with feet. Another key difference between the Alabaster Lords and the Onyx Lords would be their choice of a weapon. The Alabaster Lords possessed a blue straight sword of some strange meteor-like make, and much like the Red Guards of Hammerfell, the Onyx Lords would sport curved swords of a strange brass or gold-like material. One key thing to note is that the wielders of these swords and the swords themselves seem to possess inverted abilities. The Alabaster Lords would imbue their swords with the ability to pull in adversaries, whereas the Onyx Lords would imbue their blades with the ability of repulsion. Now, outside of a few caves and uh, the one you may find in Rhea Lucaria, there aren't too many of these guys to be found throughout the game map. However, one in particular you can find at the uh, Crater Pocked Cliffside in the Weeping Peninsula. Now, at this location, you can find several enemies along the crater. They're called Star Chasers, I believe, and they carry the strange hook-like weapons and the ability to use gravity magic. It seems they worship the Alabaster Lords in some kind of way. As that appears to be what they're doing here at this crater, or at least it seems to be one of them is doing, praying at the orb of uh, black matter that would become an alabaster lord if you approach it. I believe these star chaser enemies are obsessed with meteors or anything having to do with the stars, and uh, you can tell by their outfits that they adorn them with uh, various pieces of meteor or space-like objects or strange designs. Strange space metal. They're clearly very big space fanboys. The one interesting thing about this place is that the craters are all glowing, but if you kill the Slender Wayfarer, or the Alabaster Lord, and when you come back, they'll never be glowing again. The Alabaster Lord also doesn't respawn, but the uh, Star Chasers do, which is another interesting note, especially because the one in Yellow Annex Tunnel definitely responds, whereas the strangely placed one in the Lake of Rot does not. I can't think of any lore reasons for this outside of the fact that the one in the Lake of Rot drops his sword, perhaps marking him as a unique Alabaster Lord. And the jury's still out on why he's down there. I mean, it is just underground. He could have just been wandering and found his way down to that Lake of Rot and being a being made of stone, was able to traverse it. I mean, his location is kind of strange though. He's up really high. But again, it's all, we don't really have much of an explanation for that. The one at Rhea Lucaria might have some history. He might have been a, a teacher or an instructor there, for all we know. We do know that Radon learned gravitational magic from the Alabaster Lords. And as stated earlier, there's even some direct quotes of Radon talking to an Alabaster Lord. So that indicates that they have the ability to speak and aren't just deranged hollows attacking us with weird space magic. So it could be a safe assumption that the one found at Rhea Lucaria was a teacher in some kind there, or was studying other kind of magics there. Now what then are we supposed to make of the Onyx Lord found at the Evergel behind Carrion Manor? 
There's a number of possibilities. I mean, specifically the Onyx Lords and all the descriptions related to them were said to be destructive and called Lords only out of reverential fear of their destructive power. The Carrions could have imprisoned the Onyx Lord just based on that. Or there's other possibilities, like the Carrions could have captured him in hopes that they could turn him and use him as a weapon against the uh, Ray Lucarian scholars who had an Alabaster Lord. It's really tough to say. Or they just wanted to torture him and keep him subjugated until he taught them the secrets of his specific gravity magic. Again, it's all it's all theory as far as I can tell. I couldn't find any solid reason why that Onyx Lord was placed there. I mean, originally, when the game released, it was an Alabaster Lord that was in the Evergill, but a patch changed it to the Onyx Lord. I don't know, it could be important, could not be. It's really tough to say. Although I think the most likely it could be due to the Carrion's uh, affinity for the moon and its stars. Could be that they saw no difference between Onyx Lords and Alabaster Lords and resented the fact that an Alabaster Lord taught Radon how to imprison the stars again. Or maybe the opposite, maybe they imprisoned him so that they can learn how to imprison the stars just like Radon because the Carrion royal family I imagine included Radon since his mom was Rinala, but moving on. Now what meteor in question brought these guys to life? There's a chance it could be the one that dropped off the Elden Beast, but I think it's more likely that they're, uh, they predate that. There appears to be some association with the Falling Star Beasts, who I believe are little cocoon form versions of the Astels we come across, as they seem to possess the same strange type of dark matter teleporting ability, or just the fact that they cloak in dark matter. And you find star chasers who seemingly worship them near a Falling Star Beast in Landell, although this could just be the fact that it's a falling star beast and the star chasers worship stars. Which could possibly suggest that they're affiliated in some way with the Nox monks who are said to worship the stars. But again, there isn't much evidence to support that outside of the fact that the Nox worship the stars and the star chasers appear to worship the stars as well. There's also the fact that one of the Estelles apparently leveled the Eternal Cities with gravity magic. Now, if the Estelles are indeed affiliated with either the Onyx or Alabaster Lords, then this could definitely suggest a rather antagonistic relationship with the Nox Monks and the beings of the Eternal City. Although leveling a city seems more in line with the Onyx Lords than the Alabaster Lords, from what little we know about the two. They also aren't the only race of being that are happen to be made of a type of mineral. I mean, the clay men of the Nox cities that we find, they, they're in close proximity to various malformed stars. So there could be some association between the clay men and these meteor men, but I haven't found anything to suggest a connection between the two outside of their close proximity to those random astel looking malformed stars that hurl rocks which happen to be gravity magic at you. So far I can't really find an explanation for the one found at the sealed tunnel on the way to Reichard's divine tower. Besides the fact that he's underground, I mean, he seems to just kind of just be there. There's also that random one in Limgrave who's just wandering along the beach who happens to drop gravitas, the weapon art that they use. It's weird that the picture for the weapon art, though, shows the Onyx Lord sword instead of the Alabaster ones, though, but that's probably just a mistake. I mean, overall, the Onyx ones seem to be a lot more rare than the Alabaster ones. There appears to have even been weapons crafted for the sole purpose of dispatching life forms, like the Slender Wayfarers. I couldn't find any evidence stating whether or not Radon learned gravity magic at Rhea Lucaria or Celia, the town in Kaled, but just that he learned it from an alabaster lord, although I'd say that the Celia option is a lot more likely given that it's located in Kaled, which was his domain. As far as I know, I don't believe there's any alabaster lords located in Celia, and there is one located in Rhea Lucaria, so... Although that doesn't really mean anything either, as it's probably been quite a while since Radon learned from that alabaster lord. What's more interesting about Celia itself is the fact that there's the Nox Monk and the Nox Swordstress randomly there, unless there is an explanation I haven't found for them yet. Perhaps they're prisoners, but they do appear to be guarding something. I'm saving that for a video about the Eternal Cities though. But these guys definitely seem to be like one of the more underdeveloped uh, parts of the lore, at least so far that I've found. I haven't found much info on these guys. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Uh, please like and subscribe if you liked the video. I hope you found it informative. I plan on branching out from just Elden Ring content. There's a lot of shit I want to talk about. Like there's lots of Legend of Zelda stuff, uh, Elder Scrolls stuff, Yakuza stuff that I definitely want to talk about and make videos about. But right now, I'm just really on a roll with the uh, Elden Ring stuff because I'm just kind of learning as I go. But uh, I'll see you guys next time.